They call it backpacking for a reason. Your backpack is probably the single most important piece of gear in your loadout because without a backpack, well, you're just camping, right? But there are thousands of backpacks on the market to choose from. Large, small, traditional, ultralight, full featured, minimalist. How do you know what to choose? Well, for the last several months, I've been using the Waymark Light on and off. And I'm not saying this is the pack you definitely need to buy, but I wanna make a case for why the Waymark Light is exactly what a pack should be. There is no shortage of packs with a thousand little pockets, zippers, and gear loops, or you can get a bare bones pack. The problem with all the pockets and zippers is, are you really gonna use them all? You might use one or two, but gear loops, random pockets, clips, inner pockets, you don't really need all that stuff. And in the end, it just adds unnecessary weight. Weight you have to carry whether you want to or not. You can't really decide not to take the extra pocket or the gear loop just because you're not gonna use it. And I admit that sometimes I can get a little carried away with the weight, with the tendency to focus on it too much. But a lot of traditional packs can easily weigh four to five pounds or more. And the sort of un official threshold for an ultralight pack, at least in my mind, is about two pounds. The light comes in right around 2.5 pounds, which is light enough to keep your load manageable, but doesn't scrimp on materials and features you really want and need in a pack. In fact, when Waymark was designing this pack, they made some very specific decisions, even though they knew it would add weight to the pack. So what you have is a pack that could have been lighter, but instead was designed to keep functionality, even with a weight penalty. Okay, but what do you actually need in a pack? Well, in my humble opinion, you need a large main compartment, some side pockets for water bottles and stuff like that, and a large stash pocket that's easy to carry wet gear or quick access stuff or that extra layer you took off, but you don't want to open the main compartment to stash it. I just came off of a four-day pack with a light and I haven't even unpacked yet, so this is exactly how I have this loaded. My quilt and tent and sleeping pack go on the bottom, cook set and fuel on top of that, my pillow folded around some camera gear, my puffy, mid-layer, ditty bag, and food bag on top of that. This main pocket is where most of your stuff is going to go. And the reason I say you don't need all those pockets and other things is because if you want a little more organization instead of just piling everything on top like I do, you can get stuff sacks or organization pods that separate your gear the same way that pockets would. But if you're like me and you don't mind everything all in the same large pocket, you have the option to leave them at home. So this is all in a 50 liter roll top compartment with a compression strap to cinch everything down. 50 liters seems to be the perfect volume for me. Gives me just enough room for all my gear plus camera gear, but if 50 liters is too big for you, you can get the Waymark through that is only 40 liters. Hikers who are just starting out may want to get a slightly larger pack like a 65 liter pack simply because when you first start out, your gear tends to be a little bit bulkier, which is one of the reasons why people recommend you buy everything else before you buy your pack. That way, you know everything will fit. On the outside of the pack, I've got my chair in the large side pocket, hashtag take a seat. My water bottle on the other side. I like to use this converter tube that turns my water bottles into a reservoir, but if you're reaching around like most people do, the right side pocket is cut to allow you to reach it without a problem. And in the back mesh pocket, I've got my rain gear, my sandals, first aid kit, as well as anything else that I need to stash quickly. There are a couple of loops for trekking poles or an ice axe, some compression straps on the side, and a couple other loops where you can lash something like I did with my Zolio here. Waymark will even let you customize with hip belt pockets or a chest water bottle pocket, so if you really need some extra zippers, Waymark can provide them. And the compression strap on the top has enough length that it can accommodate a bear can if needed. In my opinion, there isn't much more than that that you really need in a pack. And it's important to note that there are a lot of packs with a very similar design, which is why I say you don't don't have to buy this specific pack, but I think it helps show what a pack should be. But if there's a must have feature that you think I'm missing, please do drop me a comment below. Okay, but the main thing I think you need in a pack is a way to transfer the weight off your shoulders and onto your hips. This is the main thing that distinguishes most backpacking packs from say like a school backpack the hip belt carries at least 80% of the weight. And Waymark was very intentional in designing this pack so that the stays of the internal frame are directly connected not only to the belt, but also to the load lifters. This allows you to not only properly shift the load to your hips, but to cinch it close to your back with the upper load lifters. 
And a lot of packs eliminate these load lifters, but they are important. Some people call them magic straps because they can make that big of a difference when weight is pulling backwards, causing pain in your shoulders and your lower back. Look, a pack is going to be most comfortable when the weight is close to your back. Some of that comes from the way that you load a pack, but no matter how you load your pack, it will have a tendency to want to pull away from your back. Load lifters, or magic straps, help pull the weight in close to your back while stabilizing your load and slightly lifting it off your shoulders. That's why they call them magic straps. Last, Waymark is a small company making all their gear in Utah. And as I said in my video last week, sometimes you buy gear from the big companies because they've got the lightest or the best or whatever it is that you're looking for. But if you had your choice, would you rather buy from a large corporation or a small backpacking company? And so the more I think about it, the more I think this is exactly what a pack should be. Not so light, it's flimsy, not over featured with stuff that you don't really need and won't use, but just what you need. And for a decent price of $280, which might sound expensive to you, but it's easy to spend well over three or $350 or more for a pack. And it's hard to find a decent pack for less than 200. The Waymark Light falls right in the sweet spot. The only thing that might make it better is if they had a chest harness option like like I talk about in this video right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.